How much does this validate you now to get the fight since everybody had been avoiding you? And, and now are you the guy truly at 168? Yeah, I, I just want to tell everybody um, I have a lot of respect for Canelo Alvarez, but he has to give me that shot now. That's what everybody wants to see. Me versus Canelo. Let's make it happen in September. David Benavidez is one of the youngest world champions in boxing. He has achieved outstanding results by following an unconventional path. Currently, he is the main opponent of Canelo Alvarez, and rumors of greatness have spread far beyond the ring. But like every legend, David has encountered those who did not believe in his skills and treated him with insufficient respect. Sit back comfortably, as we're about to tell you about the fights in which the Mexican monster destroyed opponents for their behavior. Number 1. David Benavidez and Anthony Durrell David has said on numerous occasions that you can't truly call yourself the champion until you come see him. Is there any part of you that feels like you're the challenger even though you hold the belt? No. I'm the champ. I got the belt. I mean, you lose something, you're not the champion anymore. So I got the belt and you got to come through me to get it. That's why he's here. He's come, trying to come through me. On his path to greatness, David faced temptations from the darker side of the law. He was arrested for drug possession and use, and as a consequence, the WBC Boxing Association stripped him of his belt and title in his weight class. This had a detrimental effect on David, but fortunately, he managed to get his act together and return to the righteous path. I've worked very hard for this fight. Anthony Durrell's never been knocked out, so that's another challenge we're going to take, and I'm going to be the first one to knock Anthony you can't Durrell do that. out. In response to Benavidez's provocations, Anthony did not hesitate to call his opponent a drug addict serve him with articles for rapes, and also promised to destroy his opponent, despite being the underdog, which did not bother him at all. If I'm the underdog, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, I can just still come out on top and prove everybody wrong. That just make me train harder and want it more. From the first few seconds of the match, Benavidez acted swiftly and destructively. He did not hesitate to throw combinations, and his leading hand would work as a dominant and be rapid. Anthony tried to defend and act as a counterpuncher, but David's power was so devastating that even a renowned technician like Durrell could not contain it. In the fifth round, Durrell suffered a cut above his right eye. Anthony repeatedly indicated to the doctor his readiness to continue the fight, although his corner could not properly stop the bleeding. Benavidez continued to aggressively attack in the subsequent rounds, and in the ninth round, the referee stopped the fight, recording Durrell's defeat. Immediately after the confident victory over the champion, David declared that he intended to lead the division, where the renowned red-headed Mexican is considered the king. But I'm very focused. I know I got to be at the top of the, my game to beat all these best fighters out here. There's some great fighters at 168, but I, I feel like I could take all of them on, and, and I'm going to be as dedicated as I, as I could be. Number two, David Benavidez and Ronald Ellis. I just know what I'm getting myself into, you know? First time it sucked in the bubble, but now, you know, I, I know what I'm expecting. So it got way easier. I came prepared, did what I had to do, no complaints. Ronald now seems a worthy challenge for Benavidez, and many experts are also calling Ellis the toughest fighter in the Mexican's career. There's no question, Ellis is a lot of sizzle. No, no, he's not fighting. Fast frisk combinations. Plenty of fistics, fireworks. I'm not getting the credit I deserve, so I'm going to have to take it. Unexpectedly for many, though, Ellis started the fight against Benavidez aggressively. Ronald attacked and pressed David to the ropes. Often, Benavidez had to absorb blows at close range, but David took these hits without any visible discomfort. Sometimes, the cunning Benavidez deliberately stood by the ropes, allowing his opponent to work hard, and then he would throw good combinations in response. Benavidez's plan was a maneuverable style with sharp, focused work. As a result, another beating of a top boxer. If Ellis showed competitiveness in the early rounds, by the midpoint, all of his strengths had been erased by David's power. He deliberately allowed the opponent to work and expose himself, but only to stop being cautious. After the sixth round, David unleashed his full potential, and Ronald found it incredibly difficult to cope with this. As a result, a classy beating by David. Gradually, David's class and his striking power did their job. From about the ninth round, the fight became one-sided. Ultimately, the referee stopped the fight in the eleventh round, which Ellis did not contest. After the fight, 
David decided to challenge not a specific opponent, but the entire division, which surprised the boxing community. And what, so what is next for David Benavidez? When do you see yourself fighting again and, and against who? You know, whoever, I'm, I'm willing to fight, you know, in August or September, whoever they, they want me to fight against, you know, I'm willing to fight whoever. I mean, it doesn't matter right now. I've been professional eight years. I want some excitement. I want the big names, whoever. Come on, come on. Number three, David Benavidez and Kyron Davis. I know if I would have been 100%, that fight would have been totally different. But, you know, I can say this, I can say that. But it don't really matter to nobody. The result that always matters. So what I gotta do is I gotta show people that I'm prepared, ready to fight at 160, and I fight anybody at 160. Any any person that's coming up to 154, any person that 160 that wants to fight, I don't say no to nobody. I don't say no. So I'm willing to fight anybody in the division. Kyron Davis was a kind of boxing uniqueness. He combined all the qualities of a champion that they should possess. He hit hard, moved quickly, and had extraordinary boxing intelligence incredible reflexes, and a warrior spirit. He was not shy about big challenges. Having made a name for himself, he met the Mexican monster. My thing is just shows you, um, you guys that I can fight on this world-class level. What it does for me is just puts me in situations where I can take fights like this. I'm looking to put on a show. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I, I, I look forward to fighting on David Benavidez today. You know, we're going we to have a good time. But only David understood that Davis was still far from his level. And that evening, he was planning to punish his opponent for a clear overestimation of his skills. Benavidez was better than his opponent in almost all components. Yet Davis demonstrated his fighting spirit, taking hits from his opponent and continuing to look for more moments. Nevertheless, round by round, Benavidez's advantage increased. By the seventh round, David vividly showed boxing fans what happens in case of underestimating your opponent. He turned the fight into a form of beating, where Kyron served as a punching bag for Benavidez to practice combinations and focus strikes. In the seventh round, Davis's team could not only watch the one-sided beating of their boxer and threw in the towel. Benavidez convinced not only his fans, but also the entire boxing world that he is a full-fledged contender for the title of the weight class king. Kyron took the defeat very hard and even became emotional at the post-fight press conference. He, he, he knows his best. He's still my corner. He'll be coaching me for, for the rest of my fights. I'm not. It's not. It's not. No. It's not. No. Why oh, these list trainers are? I'm mad at him. I understand the love that he had for me. Number four, David Benavidez and David Lemieux. At the fight, the Mexican monster increasingly began to attend boxing evenings in a state of alcoholic intoxication. The public started to doubt David's true championship intentions. So, the boss decided not to think about the fight with Canelo, but to give David a less known yet strong opponent in the form of David Lemieux. Just look at how vividly Lemieux knocked out his opponents. In the Benavidez-Lemieux match, the role of the knockout artist was taken by Lemieux himself. David did not shy away from loud statements about Benavidez, as he himself believed that he had the power to knock out the Mexican monster and end his domination. However, at the weigh-in ceremony, the boxers unexpectedly showed the utmost respect for each other. But only Benavidez's fans knew that he was not planning to share the status of the main knockout artist of his division with anyone, and that the Mexican monster was going to punish his opponents. I'm just excited to be here in front of all my fans, all the people that support me. You know, this fight is definitely going to be for the fans. This, not, this fight's not going to go to distance either. There's going to be a knockout, and I'm going to walk away with that title again. Lemieux was knocked out by Marco Antonio Rubio in the seventh round. And yet Lemieux oh, oh, took him back. One down, Raul. Oh, oh there's something to fight. Guys. And stop the punishment. And Number five, David Benavidez and Caleb Plant. Everybody knows I want that unification fight with David Benavidez. You know who the best 168 pounder is. If you want that, you got to come see me. I've been wanting that fight. I've been asking for it, and I'm tired of waiting. Even before reaching the peak of their careers, the boxers harbored mutual animosity towards each other. So this fight was bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> the bout carried significant stakes for both opponents due to personal animosity and the prospect of facing the undisputed world champion in the super middleweight division, Saul Canelo Alvarez. 
In the case of victory, Saul defeated Caleb and became the undisputed champion, and ever since, Plant has been dreaming of a rematch with Alvarez. Meanwhile, Benavidez has been challenging Canelo for several years, but has been unable to secure a fight with him. Realizing they are both the main contenders for Alvarez's titles, the boxers quickly signed a contract to the fight and immediately began promoting it. March 25th, you ain't got to worry about me pulling out. Show up, show up, show up. Oh, I'm going to show up. Take care of those fragile hands. Yeah. Okay, show up. And when I show up, I show up on weight, and I don't test positive for cocaine neither. What I do to Anthony Durrell? Both boxers have always been critical of their words and statements as they have always backed them up with action. The bout carried great intrigue and was dubbed the toughest fight in the Mexican monster's career. But all this turned out to be ironic as Benavidez once again proved everyone wrong. Plant had the upper hand at the beginning of the fight. He moved well and didn't give his opponent opportunities for dangerous attacks. However, 26-year-old Benavidez methodically moved forward and increased the pressure, which began to pay off from the sixth round. In the final rounds, Benavidez's advantage became evident, but Plant showed character and resilience and managed to take the fight to the final bell. After the fight, all the judges awarded the victory to Benavidez. Following the bout, the boxers each followed a gesture of respect and approval, which is simply heartening. After all, boxing is a gentleman's sport, isn't it? If it wasn't for you guys, you guys made this fight happen. Second of all, I want to give a big shout out to Caleb Plant. You know, I know I said that we weren't going to end the beef, but you know, we fought like warriors in the ring. And this guy's a, this guy's a fucking hell of a fighter. Yeah, hell of a fighter as well. Number 6. David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade After failing to secure the long-awaited fight with Alvarez, David began searching for a new opponent with a worthy legacy. Suddenly, after a long hiatus, Demetrius Andrade steps back into the fray. Interest in this bout was fueled by the combined record of Benavidez and Andrade 59-0. Two undefeated boxers would share the ring to determine the best. Such fights are always popular among fans, especially when heated with fiery trash talk. Whole, the whole Benavidez family gonna be getting hurt. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. We gonna beat up Lord Farquaad over there, you know what I'm saying? If you guys know what that is, then you know. If you don't, then you don't. But look it up, you feel me? But it's gonna be a great night. It's time for war, baby. War, and still, and new. <laughs> David was not at all afraid of his opponent. Because, you know, he's the top of the division. You know, he's uh, he showed the world that, you know, he's a really good fighter. He was Olympian, two-time world champion. And this is the only direction I thought that it was that I could go to make, to prove myself that I am the best. And he's not, a, he's not an easy opponent. He's very technical. He has very good defense, but, you know, I always find a way to win. And Saturday's not going to be no different. I'm going to find a way to beat not his Not over ass. here. I'm going to beat his ass. No, no. On the contrary, he planned to do what he has always done before this fight. Quietly, powerfully, and calmly beat his opponent. Without loud words and statements, all of us thought the fight would be competitive and close. But in reality, Benavidez was head and shoulders above his opponent. While Demetrius showed decent boxing in the initial rounds and even managed to corner the champion against the ropes acting aggressively, from the third round on, the initiative completely shifted to Benavidez. David chased the contender around the ring, hitting hard and often. And in the fourth round, he knocked Andrade down. The contender got up and continued the fight, but it was evident how hard it was for Demetrius. The contender lasted two more rounds on his feet, but after the sixth, Andrade refused to continue the fight. Benavidez defended his interim WBC World Champion title and made another step towards a bout with Alvarez. After such a significant performance, it will be hard to overlook and discount David. Benavidez is one of the main contenders for a fight with Canelo in the middleweight division. But you just watch Camille. What, what's your thoughts on Camille? He did good. He did good? Young talent. Young talent, next up. to work on, but it's a work in progress. What's one pointer you'll give him? Stay focused. 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 St